Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Zorin OS 17, the long awaited update. So let's get started. Now, Zorin OS 17 is a Linux operating system based off Ubuntu 22.04. Now, what has my attention on this operating system is the design feature. The design of the desktop is supposed to be very similar to a Windows operating system. So it's less of a learning curve when you're moving from Windows to Linux. Now, when I have friends who are just planning to move over to Linux, this is an operating system that I advise them to use just because it's one less thing they have to learn. So instead of having to learn the operating system and the desktop itself, they already know how to navigate around the desktop using Zorin. They just have to learn the Linux operating system itself. And then eventually when they get good at it, they can move on to another operating system if they want. But yes, Zorin OS is a very friendly operating system if you are planning to switch from Windows to Linux. What's best is that you can actually install this on really old hardware and it should work just fine. The long awaited update part is uh, Zorin OS 16, which is the previous version of this, was still based off Ubuntu 20.04, which means it's quite outdated as far as hardware goes, kernel wise, everything along that way so I kind of stopped telling people to switch over to Zorin maybe a year or two ago because it was outdated with that being said uh, now they finally updated to 22.04 which means we're going to get a 6.2 kernel we're going to get more hardware support it's more up to date when you install software all the bells and whistles with new updates that come along the way now being that we are in 2024 now and 24.04 might be coming out in a few months Technically, it's already outdated. That's what my thoughts are. But anyway, let's check out the desktop. Now, here we have the Zorn OS as a default. I did add a few things to it myself just to test it out, but we're gonna go through all that stuff. This is a fresh boot. So we're gonna go over to System Monitor and you're gonna see it uses about 1.5 gigs of RAM out of my 16 gigs of RAM. And I am using a mini PC for this, which has an N95, 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte storage. Otherwise, um, it is using 1.5 gigs of RAM, which is, to be honest, in today's standard, that's not a lot. But if you have a very old PC uh, and that only has 4 gigs of RAM, that is a lot, considering. But I don't know how much less it would take if you install this on a smaller machine. Now, the desktop itself prides itself on this start menu to look very similar to Windows 10, which, honestly, it does. Now, Zorn Appearance allows you to change a lot of the features of this start menu. So I could actually change it to the way I actually like it, which actually expands the name on the taskbar versus just icons itself. So I, I kind of like it this way. They also have a full application menu uh, similar to what you would find in the Mac. They also have this version where you could actually get a dock and a few other things that you can do. So let me see. If I want more desktop layouts, I do have to upgrade to Pro and they do have that option, but I am using uh, Zorin 17 Core. So I'm gonna switch back over to uh, this one right over here, which is the stock. We have different types of themes that you can change to. So they do have dark mode over here and they do have accent color. So I'm gonna click on files and you'll see, this is blue right now. If I switch over to green, the icons will be green, orange, everything will be orange. I'm gonna leave it to blue. And then we have a few effects that I did enable. So right now, if I move windows like this, it just looks standard. But if I turn on jelly mode or in Linux version, we would call it wobbly windows, uh, you have this wobbling mode. And because they have the desktop cube now, if you hit alt tab, it's 3D, which this has actually been in Linux for like a very long time. If you hit windows key, it'll actually shrink down to like some sort of window like this. And it's kind of like 3D. So let's switch back over to that desktop. As far as the interface goes, you have your telebar button. So you can move it to the left if you're familiar with uh, Mac OS, or you can move it to the right. Tiling windows, you have to enable this. It doesn't come default enable, but you do have to enable this for advanced tiling windows. And I do have a gripe about this. I am gonna show you actually. So right now I have file manager open, right? And I am gonna open another one. So I'm gonna open new window. And if I was to tile this to the left, then I'm gonna select this, tile this to the right. You can see I have the two tiling windows. I'm gonna close this out and then close this out. And then if I open the window again, it keeps its default like that size windows. It might just be a thing that I'm used to in Windows where it restores the previous size of the window, but this will actually keep it on that last time you closed it, which is tiled. Uh, one of the things that I didn't like, when I was testing this out on other resolutions, uh, it did have some overlapping issues as well. So file browsers were overlapping on the, another, 
but it doesn't seem to happen on 1080. Moving along, we have icons that we could put on our desktop. So if you're familiar with the recycling bin or network manager or home folders, it's there. Or, and then you could also change fonts over here. Now, I gotta say one thing, another thing about this. I'm not a huge fan of their dark mode. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to their dark mode. And I don't know what it is. I just don't, I'm not a huge fan of the colors on this right now. And if I was to switch the effects over, I mean the themes over to like a green, it actually changes the background color also. Like if I have orange, you could see the background color is orange as well. I'm not a huge fan of this color. I don't know what it is. So even though they do have dark mode, personally, I, I don't like the accent color that it's um, on the uh, windows with. Otherwise, yeah, it does work. Now I'm gonna keep it in dark mode for now and we'll just keep browsing along the line. Now, since I am using Zorin Core, there is not much applications that are pre-installed. We do have the standard stuff like weather, clocks, appointments, games. I did install Steam, so we're gonna check that out in a second. Graphics, they only have regular image viewer and photos. Uh, Office-wise, they have LibreOffice. Uh, internet, they do have Firefox installed and Remina. System tools is their standard system tools that you would see, upgrades or an OS, uh, power statistics, stuff like that. And then your utilities where we have our standard um, set of utilities for GNOME basically. And if you can't tell already, this is pretty much based off GNOME. Now, another thing that they added was this little feature over here, which is a GNOME thing, but they added their own little twist to it, which makes it look a little bit better. You can actually select your sound output as you want over here as well. So right now I do have it, I think on HDMI. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And let's head over to settings. Not much has changed over here. So if you're familiar with GNOME or any other Ubuntu distros, this looks similarly the same. You can go in here and change some settings. As far as like key bindings and a few other stuff, Bluetooth, um, sound, power, if you wanna change some display or your resolution, you can change it over here. I'm gonna head over to about, and it shows my device name. Uh, processor is the N95, one terabyte hard drive capacity, and it is using Wayland. Actually, I did not know that. It is using Wayland, which is pretty interesting. I wonder how NVIDIA is gonna work with this since it's Wayland and NVIDIA and Wayland is not like fully, fully supported yet. But yeah, otherwise that's how the settings itself. Uh, we're gonna pop over to Firefox right now and we are gonna, well, this is exactly what I was on the last page. So it advises that Zorin OS 17 has arrived. It kind of gives you the idea of what it is. And uh, going down the page, what's new? F smoother performance, which it does say, oh look, it does say one and a half gigs of RAM, which was 1.5 when we first started up. Universal search and improvements. So we do have that menu search right over here. Our menu is different because we could change that around, but uh, you can search for stuff over here. So let's look for Steam. There you go, look at that. It pulls up Steam. Uh, what else do we got going on over here? Multitasking redefined, which is our thing that we were just testing. I don't have a touchpad right now to test your finger gestures, but that's how it would generally look like. We do have different menus, which I showed you before. We also have this, which is their 3D cube, or if you're familiar with, um, we used to call this Compiz, and you could install the 3D uh, cube. I'm talking about like back in 2006 or seven. Alt tab switcher, which we showed you just before. So a couple of the effects that I showed you, enable animations, jellyfin mode, uh, software, actually, let's go check out software store. Now in their software store, they actually support three different things, which is app, snap, and flat pack which is not bad because they already have Flatpak installed. So if I'm looking for anything that's like Flatpak, say GIMP, and I click on GIMP here, it does have Flatpak and I should have other options here. See, with package uh, from apt or from snap or Flatpak and then I could just hit install to grab that. Advanced window tiling that I just showed you before, which works, but I didn't like the fact when you close it out, it retains that window. And then the key binding I was just explaining. So yeah, a lot of the steps uh, that I kind of just looked into, uh, we didn't look into adjustable power needs. So if you're familiar with Windows, uh, you already have this similar option. So if I go over to, let's say settings, and I jump over to the power menu, right over here. We can choose the difference between power balance or power saver. So if you're on laptops and stuff like that, this helps a lot, especially if you wanted to go on power saver or balance mode. Screenshot recording, this is just the standard GNOME uh, new screenshot program that they have. But yeah, let's see if I can pull this up. There you go, print screen. And there we have it. We could actually record stuff too. So if I want to snap just this, I could just hit this little button and I'll grab that little sound effects. 
And there we have it, a PNG of the picture we just took. Redesign weather app. Again, that's a gnome weather. Let's check it out. And check out weather. And New York. Did that not work? Okay, that seemed to not work at all. So I'm going to close that out. Two desktop layouts only for Pro. And uh, we did see this one where we were able to put the menu up on top, but we didn't have the dock. Better hardware support. Oh, here's the thing about GNOME. And I've talked about this before in a previous video. The newer GNOME has a feature to support RDP out of the box. So if I head over to settings, head over to sharing, I could actually enable this and turn on remote desktop. And instead of the default protocol being VNC, we actually get a remote protocol as RDP. So if you do want to test out Linux or you want to test out this operating system, you can install it in a virtual environment and just RDP to it, which is much easier than setting up VNC and trying to get that up and going. So yeah, that's one of the good features that I like about GNOME on the latest releases. So back to the operating system itself. Um, now that we know that all this comes up, I think that's about it. Long-term support up to 2027. The operating system itself still retains the whole familiar look that if you are coming off Windows, you won't get lost because the start menu is there, everything's there, software, packages, settings, everything. So I do still like the fact that they didn't deviate from their original design and change it to something that we have to learn from scratch. But instead, they improved on it, like adding tiling windows and stuff like that. Now, as far as uh, one of the features that they talk about in here, right here, the software store supports apt, snap, flat pack, and a few other things, app image, dev, and Windows software, which is something I want to test out and I have not tried it out yet, which what we're going to do right now. Uh, I'm going to open up in files, go into downloads, and I did have a little program that I use sometimes, which is already Windows. I have nothing installed as far as regarding Windows, like Wine or anything, I don't. So I'm going to double click this and see what happens. And it says install Windows App Store to run Levitator, da 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 da. Uh, okay, I'm going to install Windows App Support. And it's gonna bring me to Software Center and run Windows on Zorin OS with Wine and Play on Linux. Okay, so it's a Zorin OS version of Play on Linux to get Windows apps working. I'm gonna install this and see. This application I'm installing is actually super simple to run. It's basically what it does, it normalizes audio. So if you ever look into an app to normalize your audio, you could just use Levitator. They do have a Python version. You could just install straight into Linux, but I'm just trying to test out this um, app support. So I'm using the Windows version. Okay, there we go. It seems like it installed and it's running it right away, just like a Windows app. That is pretty cool. Play on Linux didn't pop up. It just popped up with my installer program. I'm going to hit next, I'll accept. Again, this does not take much to run, so I'm just going to install it like I normally would on a Windows program. Next, launch. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Right away, no errors, nothing. Usually it would uh, complain about COMX something or, or MSCOM. Yeah, whatever. It's a DLL that's usually missing, but it, it, it actually installed it, got everything up and running, no complaints. Let me see if I can run this program. Where do I? Wine, right over here. CN Levitator. Yeah, starts right up. And all I had to do was just double click it. Let me try again. Double click. Run anyway. <clears throat> That's it. Wow, very impressive. I actually really like that. That I could just double click on a program and it runs. I don't have to like run wine or anything in the background to get it up and going. All right, that I approve, definitely. All right, for now, we're going to test out a game. So let's close this out because I don't need that anymore. And we're going to head right into Steam. And since I've been running this for a while, let me go check out my system monitor. And my RAM is at 3 gigs. Well, Firefox is still running. So let's close out of Firefox and see how much that drops. 2.6. 500 megabytes. Then I'm running this, so it's gonna bring it back up. All right, here we go. I only have one game installed, which is Risk of Rain. It doesn't take much to run this game. As a matter of fact, actually, I've been playing a lot of Risk of Rain recently with my son, and it's been a lot of fun. But I did put up um, Mango HUD so you guys could see the FPS, and it's not gonna do great because this is not a gaming machine itself, this mini PC system to be running games, but I had no problem installing this from ground up. I was able to go to the Software Center, click on Steam, download that, log into my account, download the game that I want and I had no problem adjusting anything that I want. The only thing I had to add was Mango HUD so you could see the FPS but that was about it. I had no problems uh, installing games on this. And there we go. 
game starts up perfectly fine. I'm gonna go over to single player. Audio sounds good. I have a lot of stuff unlocked already. I'm just gonna start this up. It does have a little flickering going on right now, which normally doesn't flicker. Game loads right away. Um, my FPS is at 25, 26. It's a little bit low for what I like to play this game on. And basically, if you never played this game, it's very, very fun. It's a rogue type game where um, every time when you kill something, you earn a little bit of money, then you could open up these, um, what do you call these chests? Where it will unlock abilities or upgrades to your character and you just go around killing stuff. And there's a lot of things to do, but yeah, it's a very fun game if you never got into it. I put a lot of time into this trying to unlock stuff. I, and I still don't have everything unlocked. That's how much I play this game and it's still pretty good. Oh man, I could just keep continuing this. Anyway, it's not about this game itself, but yeah, I might play this on my gaming channel soon, live, because it's such a fun game and there's so many different builds that you could do with it. Anyway, that is it for me. I actually do enjoy using this operating system. It was very intuitive. I had no problems running it. Uh, there was a couple of things here and there, like I don't really like the dark theme. And as far as the windows tiling, I think it could be improved on how when you close out the window, it could restore back to the original state. But otherwise, it's very user friendly. Um, it could get you into Linux. I really do like the Windows thing where I was able to just double click on the EXE and it will install for me. So a lot of things good going for it. So if you guys are interested in this operating system, I'll leave a link down in the description below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then same my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.